Hey y'all, it's Danae and I'm back again with the Philadelphia Sunday Sun every Sunday here on Facebook at 2 p.m. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I have here with me Bougie Mustard, who I've been following for a while. Also, Destiny, that's her name, but I'm sorry, are your pronouns she, her? Oh, yeah, she, her. Yeah, um, Destiny, that's what I thought. I'm sorry, I should have asked her. But um, yeah. I have Destiny, aka Bougie Mustard, here with me, a photographer, a content creator. Uh, she just is amazing. Like, I, when I was reading your bio, I was thinking, like, okay, like Issa Rae of Philly. <laughs> um, that's the vibe that I was getting. Um, but Bougie, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and then we'll get into the show. Well, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, what was it? My name is uh, well, Destiny, who was it? But you can call me Bougie or Bougie Mustard. Um, it was it? I, uh, first, I'm a fashion portrait photographer. But um, recently, these past like two years, I've been getting really into uh, doing a lot of like community work, bringing in uh, the music and um, well, just other creatives, just, just trying to make as much collaborative work as possible. Mm -hmm. so. 23 11 oh southwest philly so silly yeah oh that's what's oh okay two and five you know we love philly here <laughs> yes we love philly okay so the first thing that comes to mind when i think of you is your photography it's so dynamic and i really can tell that you're trying to tell stories specifically like stories of black people not necessarily just in your city but in general i've noticed like a lot of dimension and a lot of shape can you talk a little bit about your eye um, as it pertains to being behind the camera Oh, yes. Um, so I would say, so, okay, let me start with growing up. Growing up, I've always been in like a predominantly like white school and just like a white environment. And then um, I just did not like, and I think a lot of people agree with this, I just don't like how they tell our stories. <laughs> and I don't like, I'm like not really a fan of any of that. So um, I didn't really, I started getting into photography when I was like 14. And I knew I wanted to, um, I wanted to take pictures of black people in a way like was it that we're not used to seeing. So I try to like put us in like what was it kind of like white spaces was it but make it more so about us and it just trying to trying to show us in like different lights. So like a lot a lot of my pictures is talking a lot about masculinity and femininity and then um was it also bring like religion or uh, Christianity mainly for uh into it as well and kind of just what was it it's like it's a reflection of myself but also just like of our community as well mm -hmm. and then just going on different like topics that we might not even be the comfortable of sharing or just just topics that like I feel like I need to be said and I feel like even in um I would say like recently when I was like maybe three or four years ago I started really getting into fashion photography too and I just noticed like every time when when uh was in magazines and stuff would talk about masculinity or just like or anything regarding like was a black identity it's very like redundant and mm -hmm. it's very like I feel like they're not really tapping into it. Like they put they put a do rag on a black man, he'd be like, "Yeah, masculine." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, if y'all masculinity, yeah, they'll either do the do rag or they'll put like some flowers in their hair because it's like, oh, anti toxic black that black masculinity. Girl, I know yeah. it all too well. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just very. It, it, I saw that a lot. I think I would say around like what is it? Uh, 20, 2018, 20, Um, uh, honestly, to twenty twenty two. So I was just like, no, let's let's do something different. So that's been like my goal. Uh, okay. Every yeah. So I'm so interested in the fact that you like to mix your religion with topics of uh, black masculinity or black femininity and things like that. Um, cause the two often come to a head. So I'm wondering what the process for you has been like trying to kind of put those two things together in a way that makes sense and also gets people to talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, um, was, I've, uh, was, uh, I'm a, I'm a preacher's kid. <laughs> so like, it was kind of like, I knew I wanted to talk about religion in my work, but I never, wasn't necessarily sure how. Mm -hmm. But like, as I like got older, I was realizing like, okay, Christianity did like play a lot into me trying to figure out myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I kind of had to step away. What was it like Christianity a little bit, like figure out myself. And I'd be like, okay, like, okay, there's some connections here. And then I'm just like, but it's a lot of toxicity in Christianity that I feel like people don't talk about, mm -hmm. especially, especially towards, towards women as well. So I feel like that's how I'm able to connect it to. Okay. And so how has that knowing influenced your work? Like, is it with the type of people you might cast or projects? Is it the type of clothes that you use? Is it the type of editing? Like, how are you making sure that the story that you're trying to tell is actively portrayed in your work? Because it's such like a, a, a grand concept, really, um, that I can imagine it sometimes might be hard to kind of like make it into this concrete thing. No, it really is. I think when... 
honestly, in the whole process, I think it's um. Well, one, I always start with research. I can't do I can't do anything without that. So like I map write everything down. And then honestly, I would say when it comes to when I put out model calls and um when I do like editing, I think was I think tones and con- like contrasting and even even black and white black and white is my favorite even though I don't use it a whole lot I feel like the way you like the amount of color that you put into the pictures really help kind of bring the story together that makes yeah. Sense. yeah and you know as somebody who I've never really been on that side of the camera but as somebody who's often in front of it I really love the idea of having photographs be such a part of history you know they're so important you look back and sometimes the only thing that we have is photos how does that knowing that you creating some that you're creating something that's history really how does that knowing like propel you forward and kind of like guide your path or how has it honestly I didn't really was it I knew photos of course is part like making history things but I never I think once hmm, I gotta say this once I did this one project it was called uh it was called Fear No Nigga. And then um, when I had presented it to uh, the class I was at, um, people, what was it? I got a lot of feedback from that, but like two to three years later, people were still coming to me about that project. Mm-hmm. And then they were just like, no, like you don't understand how much that meant to me. Wow. So I think, I think really, I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. I think I, I more so want people to realize the person in the photo rather than me, like my work, if I'm making sense. Yeah. I want I kind of just wanted to like people to look at these pictures and just be like, I can do this one day. And like this inspires me. Like not even like giving too much credit for myself, but just like the people in this work and just the stories that are being. So I think that's just most important. Yeah, yeah. So I have a question for you as a photographer because I am in admiration of what you guys do. I really don't know how you just convey so much like emotion and bring so much out of people with a photo. Um for you when you're on sets with these models or when you're working with whomever, how are you making sure um, that their individual stories are being told as well, like through shapes and and through things like that? Because like I said, like when I was looking at your work, I noticed like a lot of shapes, a lot of dimension, Um, the editing that you use, it tells a story within itself. So how are you tying um, the the, uh, models individual stories into what you've created? I think honestly, I think what photographers forget is like, what was it? That you can just talk to the models. <laughs> like, was I really, I really enjoy connecting with people. Like when I'm on set, I'm a whole different person. I feel like I'm on set. Normally I'm pretty, I'm really quiet and like chill. But when I'm on set, I'm like, it's go time. Like we need to, like, I take art very like seriously. So I'm like, all right, y'all, let, let's get to it. Yeah. But um, I always, um, well, one, I always want to make sure the model understands like my vision. And then I also like, what was it? I try to learn more about them. So like, it won't be like, okay, like they, they, they just got hired for this shoot. They're just there. Like, no, like I want you to be like happy to be. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's just really a whole lot of like communication and then uh, making sure like the, like people are comfortable. Mm-hmm. I think, I think people who is it kind of just like, I think people take models for granted as well. They think yeah. it's in, in front of the camera and be a robot. I'm like, no, that's a human with emotion. <laughs> it's like, please don't get me started. <laughs> I just did an interview about this yesterday. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I want to hear more about that. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I talk to models often just about like our place in the industry and just in the world in general and how we like kind of choose to maneuver um, for whatever reasons, for varying reasons. You know, somebody might be a little bit more vocal about like something they might not like. Somebody might be a little bit quieter and more like coquettish about things that they don't like because it's just such a weird space to occupy, especially if, you know, as a, as a Black person, like, in a predominantly white space, um, but we talked so often about how models are used as, like, objects and props, and how, like, the, the job really isn't as glamorous as people would think it is all the time, because sometimes, like, people really look at you as a product, and as a brand, and not a person, so I'm happy that you're able to kind of, like, notice that, and that you're doing something with it on your end, because, it's rare. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. My mom's be going through it, like, and I'm just like, was especially because was there's so many like there's honestly a lot of like weirdo male photographers. So yeah. like, uh, I'll, when uh, when people are booking me, they're just like, oh, okay, because 
uh, when people see Bougie Mustard, I don't know, a lot of people thought I was a guy at first. So, like, when they talk to me, and then when they talk, they're like, oh, you a woman, this makes me feel so much better. And I'm just like, oh, what, 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 what like, what's going on? So, like, yeah. Yeah. Wait, can you talk to, can you talk to us a little bit about um, the inspiration behind the name Bougie Mustard? I think it's amazing, but I would love to hear, like, how you go from Bougie Mustard or Destiny to Bougie Mustard. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. Um, so I came off it my freshman, no, not my freshman, my sophomore year of college. I okay. honestly was really bored. Um, well, you know the mustard grape coupon? Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's really a play off, off of that because, like, it, yeah, it's, okay. I, it really is. I think it's like eight, six dollars for that mustard. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> and then I just said it in my head and then I kept saying it. I'm just like, I'm like, this would be a funny little username. And then um, I made it. And then after that, I just continued to, um, I yeah, make a brand out of it. Yeah. I mean, so many artists, I know that some people that you're inspired by is like Tyler, the creator and like Kanye, who's now yay and like people like that, right? Um, and they all have these really amazing stage names that they've come up with that they kind of can't shake. Kanye West is obviously Kanye's na- you know, name, but he goes by yay now. So kind of works, you know, in, in where I'm going with this, but how, because, you know, I, I think about, like, creating names all the time, and I just, I can't, so, like, how impactful and how important do you think it is to have a name for your brand that, like, can stand the test of time? I honestly, honestly, I feel like, okay, because I thought, at first, I thought Bougie Mustard was mad corny, the name, like, mm-hmm. I thought, at first and then when I put it out there I'm like why did I do it <laughs> and then honestly I think with any name whether it's your, it's like your actual like first name or um or just whatever you choose I feel like whatever like the work is I feel like it's, it's about like the work and like what you put behind it and kind of like how you want to be like uh even though it was I feel like all as people we hate being perceived but they're gonna do that regardless That's so true. however yeah so however you want to be like seen because yeah. um what was it because when you hear the hair when you hear the name bougie i feel like i feel like people already assume like was it stuck up like not really like uh what was it and i'm really was it? then when people meet me they're just like oh you mad like down to earth and i'm just like i'm not as bougie as my name <laughs> <laughs> it is. so like no yeah i think no name names are important to a certain extent but i feel like it's what the energy you give behind it is more important mm, so the person makes the name the name doesn't make the person Okay, okay. So let's talk a little bit about um, your life outside of photography. So you also really like music. Tell us a little bit about that. I, yeah, I always love it. You see, I got Marvin Gaye in the Yeah, (laughs) I'm like looking. (laughs) So like my dad, he had, was he had got put me on, what was it? I'm trying to think. I think the first, what was it? He put me on to Tribe Called Quest when I was around like in my my early like teens. And (laughs) then I was just like, oh, I need to tap in. So like, all, all the time like we would I would just go into his room and then uh what was it he would just like play like so many different like songs like on YouTube he'd be like you I bet you don't know about this <laughs> and then he'll do that I, okay. parents love to do that what you know about this I don't I know you don't know nothing about this the parents love to do that it's so it's so hilarious so, but yeah. I, well, I was like dad I do know about this <laughs> so um no I guess and then from that I uh when I got to college I like accumulated like so many like friends in the music department just because I know I try making music I really can't do it for myself but Mm -hmm. I really admire people that can and then like my I just have a really I just really like how music made me feel and it really honestly and more music more so inspires my uh work than I would say like other like uh photographers than uh than photo work it's just something about like music like I don't know it like helps me like decide on the coloring it Mm -hmm. helps me decide on like um what what, like project or vibe I want to do it Mm -hmm. just it's really I feel like it really sets a certain atmosphere and that's like why it's so like important to me and that's so interesting because you could have played like let's just say like a Marvin Gaye song or you could play a Tyler the Creator song and you're saying that depending on like what song Mm -hmm. is like that depicts like the vibe of your shoe like how that looks wow that's such like a small specific thing that's so random but completely like changes the trajectory of your work so like do you cut so basically you're saying you come into a project with like a open mind and whatever song kind of plays is the the direction that you go in no yeah like it it really no yeah it definitely is random I like that you said that because it's just like 
I, yeah, I, I, I always try to have an open mind about like everything. But like, if I, I'll pick a topic, and then like if a certain song comes on, I'm gonna listen to that song like a like a hundred different times until like something clicks. Mm-hmm. And um, it all, it always somehow what works out. Sometimes I be getting real, real like nervous. I'm just like, oh, what if, what if this song's not doing it for me? Even when I'm doing like photo shoots, I always make sure like the music's okay or the model has something on that they like because. Mm-hmm. Like, it really makes people feel comfortable and like that's and that's my that's my one number one rule be comfortable and be your and be yourself yeah. So yeah. okay so like a typical day on set what's your playlist looking like give us like top three songs top three oh okay um one is uh headphones uh by maxo it's a very it's a very chill and common song um i'm trying to think i'm gonna add this one recently it's been best interest by tyler the creator okay and my last one is um it's foreign by playboy cardi i'm really i'm really low-key a cardi stand but i don't be trying to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so the philly scene um the philly creative scene is really on and pop and i've talked to a couple of different people from the scene who are in it now who used to be in it who are moving to it and everybody's so excited about philly what was it about your city that made you so excited where you were like, okay, I want to start throwing events and I want to start collaborating with different people in my area. Was there like any specific moment that that happened for you? Yeah. So I would say when, I think it was, oh yeah, 2020, I had made, um, what was it? I wanted to put together a collaborative album and, um, what was it? I just, I've just been in a lot of like studio sessions and I'm and I'm just like watching like these like artists. I'm just like, yo, like like dude, like Philly has so many like like powerful and talented like artists. And like I feel like I feel like the only way, what is it, we can move forward or like it can really start getting more attention is if they start like collabing. Mm-hmm. And um was I saw some stuff like that was happening and I'm just like, yo, I really love this. And then um was I would say around like 20. 19 I started like going out to like more events well before pandemic yeah I uh, started going out to more events and I'm just like there's a there's so much like happening I'm just like someone needs to do something about this yeah. so, what is it yeah I was just like I'm I was just I don't know I'm just amazed about like how many like talented people that's here and right. like, I'm that continuing like to meet like like on a daily yeah so how did you decide that okay like it's me I'm the person who needs to you know, I'm the person who sees this. I'm the person that like, is like looking around, like, is anybody seeing what's going on right now? And I'm the person who needs to put everybody together. Like what in your mind kind of clicked and was like, okay, like, this is my moment. This is for me. I want to do this for my city. Um, what was it? it was kind of like, was it? at first I was just like, I didn't really think of it as like, oh, it should be me. I, it kind of just like happened. I just be having like random ideas. And um, what was it? I'm very, I'm very organized when it comes to like making like art and like planning stuff. So I was just like, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm just like, okay, maybe I can organize a little something. Mm-hmm. But um, what is it? What was I lost track? I don't know. It kind of, it kind of just happened. Mm-hmm. I, I would say one of the first um music artists I connected with was a uh, was a Ronnie uh, Ronnie Riggles. He um was he's a very he's a very determined artist. So when um he had was it was for he had was doing this project and he wanted me to do 30 me and my friend uh jordan playing he wanted to do 30 i'm jordan uh, he's on the show before too really i can't tell him okay (laughs) so oh yeah he wanted us to do it and then i'm just like 30 cover arts and then i and then i saw like um it was like five different other projects going on and i'm just like okay but imagine if all these determined artists came in one place and then just like i'm a very it was, yeah I'm a very determined artist as well so I was just like we put all all these heads together something good can happen yeah and so what was the um I guess result of putting that together oh yeah so um Big Bougie's Neighborhood is on a uh, SoundCloud mm-hmm. it has uh, 18 plus artists on it um I'm gonna name some um it was, it's uh it was, it's Ronnie Riggles, Jordan Plain, uh Eli 616, um Ryan G's is on it Jeez, it was so many. Oh yeah, we uh, was, oh yeah, so uh, bad, bad bastard. We had oh, dope. I know, I I know who this is. <laughs> that is too. Yeah. yeah, it was just like, and then at first I was really nervous because um, Philly people, Philly we 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 can be some aggressive 
people and then they can it can be really like weird what was it but just putting um what was it each it was three to four sessions and um what was it I picked like four to five artists for each session okay. so um, I was just like okay maybe their vibes can like come together mm -hmm. and each well perfectly everyone worked well and, and it was just amazing so nice how long did it take for you to put the entire project together I to this day I really don't know how we did it all in a month <laughs> a month a month yeah and then we did, even did like a rollout too for mm -hmm. it we had made uh my friend uh Patrick um he had made trading cards for for it and then um what was how many it was a uh, I believe it was 10 songs on 10 or 11 songs on the album wow and uh, what was it? We recorded at Obi Records, okay. and they uh oh, they're talented as well. Highly recommend if you make music. <laughs> but um, what was it? It just, it just happened. It just flowed. You know when you find like a group of people that you're finally comfortable with, and yeah. you're just yeah, I can rock with these people <laughs> for a minute. Right. That's just uh, that's what's up. So would you do it again? Um, I think about it a lot. I think I will, but maybe like later. I think I want to get some funding behind that because I did not know studio sessions cost. <laughs> yeah that, so yeah yeah okay okay so then I mean that kind of leads into uh, what we were talking about off the record is the project that you have coming up so um I'd love for you to share what you have going on oh okay. yeah um so what was it my uh my most favorite one is a uh, bougie cypher ring I um I invited I think all together like 20 20 artists and it's going to be it's going to be three rounds and then um was I just wanted I wanted to do something again that just brings uh was underground artists together and just giving them a platform and then at every um at every uh round was it the first one was uh what was the first one it was February second and um what was it the artist was it they got to rap and then we then I did interviews of them afterwards and I even gave them individual photo shoots and um. I, I I'm just realizing like a lot of like artists don't even get the opportunity to even do something like like that like I like artists don't even are not able to get photos because of course like was it money is like weird and I, that's perfectly fine and they don't even get like interview and I'm just like I'm like wow like what was it I'm like was this your first time and then just seeing how like was just like grateful and happy they was they were just like wow I finally found like was it? I I'm really like in my element and that just made me like happy so um um, I'm collabing on that with uh, was it? Their name is uh, DB Mars. They own uh, Makeshift Studios. Okay. They're mad talented, and uh, was it? They did the video part, and I'm doing like the photo and like the organization and stuff. Yeah. Wow. And, um, I'm really excited for that. The next one is February oh, 20th. Cool. Okay. It's, it's gonna be a uh, it's an all girl cypher. Ooh. Um, yes. Was it? And, and nobody's talking about like I feel like no one's bringing up all the talented uh woman artists like rappers. Oh. That's oh, upcoming. I no any actually from philly right now was i'm a, i'll put you on was <laughs> they really doing it and then um oh my computer uh was you mind making my charger real quick i'm so yeah. sorry go ahead there we go all right and then what is it my next project is called uh it's called musty uh Zon musty zines and then um what was it musty is just a, a cut off part of, off of mustard but um was it's gonna be a three part um little like mini magazine series and um was it they're gonna be about like some topics that I wanna do. Okay. So, uh, the first magazine is about um it's about appreciating uh the natural state of your face and then body and then kind of just creating like shapes and um like silhouettes of it. And then the second part is called uh it's called hairlines. Um I I wanna recreate, I just want to uh, appreciate kind of like um was it this black man hair and then kind of just and then I'm gonna ask some like questions I feel like hmm, I feel like when people come at low is it I know it was as women was it, I'm very I'm very sensitive about my hair I'm like oh, I need to do something with this. so like I feel like men are the same way when people ask them about their hairlines and stuff mm -hmm. and like they can feel like kind of like insecure about it so I kind of want to bring attention to that and then the last one is called bougie women and um was that every uh I think I got 10 models overall for that. And then I'm asking every woman when they come in, I'm just like, how would you classify as bougie? And um, what was it? And would you like, and like, do you consider yourself as a bougie woman? Mm -hmm. And are you, so yeah. Wow. 
That's so dope that you took something like Grey Poupon, turned it into the name Bougie Mustard, and now it's become like such like a baseline behind what you do. I love that so much. And I love that you talked back about, you know, Black masculinity and things like that, and things that men might be a little more insecure about, um, and bringing that to the forefront. Because yeah, like, there are things that men feel insecure about, um, as much as, you know, the world tries to act like that's not the case. And so I'm really happy that you're kind of creating that platform, um, but also giving people the space to create and to be vocal about what they do and to perform. Um, I think that's so awesome because, you, you, like you said, a lot of people don't get opportunities. You know, you see these amazing people. There's been people that I've interviewed in the past and they, you know, are pretty prolific, but they're like, oh, this is my first time doing an interview. And I'm like, that's crazy. And there are so many things about the music industry that people don't understand. Um, and it's, you know, you yourself had just said that you didn't know some things, you didn't know studios cost so much, for example, you didn't know that people weren't getting these opportunities. Um, so for you as a person who kind of just started this on a whim, like, what does it feel like for you now, seeing your work, how your work has progressed over the past couple of years into something that you might not have expected it to be? Um, Honest, honestly, it's still kind of like overwhelming <laughs> and like kind of like I'm just kind of kind of like taking it one step at a time. Yeah. Because I always just say, and sometimes I still say like I'm just a photographer, and we're like I'll just be like I'm just a photographer that likes to help people. But like now, like seeing it, like um, it it's just it's just crazy, like realizing like like as you grow, like just realizing like your other uh strengths and like what else you can do. So mm-hmm. um, I kind of just like want to hold on to your strengths and just keep going with that and then just just see how it goes I don't really I feel like when you try to like make a plan or something or like you put too much I don't I don't want to say expectation too much like on it like it doesn't go like as you as you may want it to so like I'm just I'm kind of just enjoying it like moment by moment because honestly I do I made a big Woody's neighborhood I didn't think I would ever do another like project as big as that and now here I am with big (laughs) bougie ciphering and I'm just like I'm just like I love it I just really love like working with people so I just want to continue doing that in like any aspect. Yeah, and you're young too. You have so much going on and you're young. You said you're 23, right? Yeah, I just turned 23. Oh my God, that's crazy. When was your birthday? Oh, January 20th. Crazy. Oh, happy belated. Thank you. Yes, so you, I mean, you're doing all of these huge, amazing, big things at such a young age. So I'm so excited to see what, you know, you do with the rest of your years, the rest of your life, like the time that you decide that you want to be bougie mustard and beyond, like, I'm really excited to, you know, see what you turn that into. Um, And I just love the concept of your work, you know, like seeing black people in different spaces in the past and the present and the future. I had an interview last week about like, it wasn't about this, but we talked a little bit about how important it is to be able to see yourself in like these different spaces. Um, And again, so I just really commend you for creating those spaces for us. Um, But that was the last question I had for you. Um, Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on before we go? Honestly, no, like this, this is a honestly one of the greatest interviews I've had. Oh, (laughs) thank you. Like you really, like you be knowing. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. That really makes my day. Thank you. Awesome. Well, before we go, can you just drop your socials? Oh yes. Um, it's honestly bougie muster on everything. <laughs> just bougie muster on Twitter, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, everything. Yeah. Can you just spell it though? Because I know you said on Twitter that people were spelling it the wrong way. So can we just clear that up for the people? Oh yes, it's B O U J E E, not G J J E E. Awesome, and that's on everything. And that's on everything. Yes. Actually, you know what? I did have one last thing for you. I noticed on your page, every single page of your um, website says wealth in the name of work. Can you just talk a little bit about that tagline and why that's important to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, honestly, it's as simple as I want, when people book with me, I want them, when people, uh, yeah, when they book with me and when they work with me, I want them to see them as well. I want them to see themselves as wealthy and as bougie because I consider it bougie, I don't consider it bougie as like, like as a, a con at all yeah. I think of it as like you know like we're how can, how can I words as like we're I don't know we're royalty and yeah. like and like was it and you sh- and everyone should see themselves as that so yeah. like when they were me what was it I always have a mirror <laughs> who is it yeah, I'm not shoot so like I want them to look at themselves as wealthy mm, I love that awesome well thank you so much bougie for joining me today again guys I'm here with the Philadelphia Sunday Sun every Sunday at 2 p.m make sure that you're following bougie seeing what she got coming up 
She has some great projects. She said um, before we got on the interview that she got to go and take some photos for Valentine's Day. So make sure y'all are hitting her up. Um, she could take a picture. She could do this, that, whatever you want her to do. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode. Again, every Sunday here on Facebook at 2 p.m. I mean, you can also check us out at www.phyllisun.com if you're looking for articles or you can get us in print for $40 a year. Again, Bougie, thank you so much for joining me today and I will talk to you soon. Thank you again. Bye.